Hello and welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. Scoring the players time after Newcastle have beaten West Bromwich Albion by two goals to one. We are live. This is the first scoring the players live of the season. How many times can I say live? Well, it is live. It's for sound like Martin Tyler. Um, yes, get your scores in in the comments and we'll get some of them read out throughout the show. And give us your opinions if you agree with myself, Sam and Brandon who are on the show this evening. So we'll start with Carl Darlow, Sam. Um, couldn't have done anything about the goal, um, but a quiet afternoon, really. It was. Um, I don't think you can score him too highly. Not through no real fault of his own. Um, but could, he, like you say, could he have done anything about the goal? Not really. We all know whose fault the goal was, which we will come on to later. Um, so I'll give him a seven and a half. He was fine. Commanded his area well. Um, come and that, come out and uh, claim some crosses, but wasn't really put under that much amount of pressure was he um, I can't think of a real meaningful West Brom attack other than the goal It's what you expect from a Newcastle goalkeeper don't you Yeah, yeah. definitely We've had to, he's just like it's, it's Steve Bruce talked about it's going to be a difficult difficult decision in a couple of weeks time because Dubravka is very very close to making a return so Yeah but I'm, like how can, you, how can you drop Dubravka I cannot go over it I cannot get over it what does this lot do wrong to drop him because he got injured, and that's is that's his mistake. Like, come on, and he yeah. saved us so many times, and now you're gonna fucking drop him for that's Dolo because he's playing good games. Like, I kind of understand. And this Dolo is used to rage on for weeks and weeks and weeks, isn't it? Because but mate, I mean... Dolo is used to be a second goalie, and Dubravka. If you drop him now, he's gone. You you leave such a valuable player, in my opinion. But get in the get in the comments below. Who would you rather start if we're both fit, Dubravka or Dolo? It's a good debate to have. Um, Brandon, let you continue with Jamal Lewis, left back. Not his finest day in a black and white shirt, but Mate, just I, I said it a long time. One. I said it a long time, but I, I haven't really seen it. I know Sam disagrees with me, but what's with his love, man? Like, what did, what did he do? What was he thinking with his goal? Like, it wasn't great, was it? It wasn't it, it's great. just, my, it's just it's mind blowing, it. man. It's just mind blowing. He's just doing fuck all, he's doing nothing, seriously. Does he, Sam? No, he had a shocker today. Really poor. Um, was asleep, and it was it was it was the battle. The highlight battle on the field today was Lewis against Furlong, and Furlong won it hands down. I think Furlong was in his head a little bit after that little incident they had in the first half. Um, Lewis wanted to bite back. Um, they both got booked, but yeah, he was he was fast asleep for that um, that cross. What score would you give Lewis today, Brandon? A minus two, if it's possible. But let's go with a that would be nice, a three. That's what I was going to go with. So I'm quite happy yeah. I've gone with that. Oh, one. <laughs> no, it, it's look. He got taken off in the second half as well. Matt Ritchie was brought on. Um, look, it, it wasn't a good day, but attacking wise, you know, he has got that in his locker where he has helped us in games. Um, Man United have just got a penalty, by the way, in the derby. Just to keep an eye on that as well. Um, but Jamal Lewis gets a three out of ten. Hopefully he can return back to better and form. And that's being nice, though. Wednesday. That's being nice, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. I completely agree. Um, I'm going to continue with Kieran Clark. I thought he was exceptional at times for Newcastle. It's, I always feel calm when he's at the back. And then Isaac Hayden is a man who isn't an out and out centre half, but I thought he was. Just, they were both just so relaxed under pressure. Yes, West Brom had the moments, but. I thought in, there was no real mistakes from Kieran Clark. I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10 this afternoon um, for Newcastle. Probably, arguably, one of the, his best best centre-halves at the club right now, Kieran Clark. Uh, Sam, let's move on to the other centre-half, a man that recently had coronavirus, Isaac Hayden. Isaac Hayden, considering he was... I know he played a bit for Arsenal um, in his younger days when he uh, at centre-back, but He's a central midfielder by trade nowadays, isn't he? Um, so technically, he was uh, he was out of position. Honestly, don't don't let's not blow this money <laughs> and go up anymore. But um, I'm going to give Isaac Hayden an eight. Um, didn't put a foot wrong for me. Um, was commanding. He was. Um, no frills, which is kind of what you want your centre back to be in a flat back four. Uh, just assured, comfortable. West Brom aren't blessed with great strikers, so um, 
it's a, it, it was a real blessing that this game happened now when we've got a bit of a crisis at the club. Um, so yeah, he was absolutely fine, filled in perfectly, slotted in, not as good as you like. Should just um, give a shout out to Federico Fernandez, though we did miss, and he's been an absolute iron man. Um, I did say in the live fan reaction show, we we're trying to work out when the last time he missed the league game was. Um, because I, I bet it's knocking on 12 months, if not longer. So he's just yeah. been an absolute hero. But you can have really blame him for missing this one. No, really not. And um, Bruce said it's just that, the time we're living. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. So um, hopefully he'll be back for Wednesday, which Bruce kind of hinted at. There'll be a few more returning, but um, Isaac Hayden was plenty assured, and we were kind of none the worse for it today. Definitely. It's like a chameleon, is he? Isn't he? It looks like Isaac Hayden can almost play anywhere except of goalie, but. Except of <laughs> yeah, you never know. He might have to go and go if Darla gets an injury. Who who knows? Uh, Brandon, I, I've not even I've not even mentioned. I don't think any of the lads have mentioned this, right? But I think you look a little bit like Emil Craft, and that's who we're talking about next. Um, how do you think Emil Craft did this afternoon? Did what you expect from a player from Newcastle? Solid. Uh, I will rate him a seven. Was he that he good was not, he was... today? That's generous. Nah, he's okay, man. He did his defensive work. I'm mean, just rating on defensive. That's where he's for. And he did solid. Never, really, He didn't really do anything wrong. So, yeah, why not? Seven. Do you Possibly agree? ever win. Do I agree? No. Um, he was okay. Um, he was okay at the back. I mean, should he have done better in stopping the cross for their goal? I'm not going to blame him for it. But... Um, because it was Lewis's fault, but um, defensively solid. Going forward, I thought he was pretty poor. Um, his crosses were poor. Um, his passing was poor, but defensively solid. Um, it's 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 one of them. I would have done do a better gone, job. I would have gone for a six, but I don't know. I wouldn't no, have gone that high. I I, w- I would do if we had a draw or lose, but or or if, if we had a draw, I would give him a six. But we won, so uh, you've done his. I, well, thought I, was, I thought it was a little bit at fault for the first goal. I think Phillips easily turns him. I know he slips a little as well, which doesn't help, but I think he was he was sold down the river for the first goal. I know it's, Jamal Lewis is the man at fault and he should clear it and he, sh- he should do something. But I think Emil, I, I don't know, we just don't have a good right back. We just don't. With oh, Mankio, don't. Yadlin or... Uh, let's hope Jetro position. comes back. My yeah. fellow Dutchie. Yes, I'll agree with that with you, definitely for uh, Brandon Jetro. He's flirting though. He's and you're, doing, with us. You're, in, you're, in, you're in the car, aren't you? So you must be dropping him off on the, towards the ferry, maybe? Yeah, he's in the, he's in the back. <laughs> get it up. Get it up. Please say, say hello to him. Oh. <laughs> right, I'll continue with Matt Ritchie on the left-hand side this afternoon. Um, steady Eddie performance from Matt Ritchie, in my particular opinion. I like the fact that he was getting crosses in. Um, just didn't really take advantage of it, but... I think you could tell he hadn't played a lot of football at times, but it wasn't the worst performance I've seen from Matt Ritchie. I'll go 6 out of 10 for this afternoon. Uh, Sam, first man in the middle was the captain, John Joe Shelby. Um, I thought I, he's, always, he's, he's brilliant to watch on the ball. And I think against a team like West Brom, him and Sean are going to get a lot of time. And they did look good, especially towards the second half, back end of the second half after West Brom had scored. Um, what did you make of his performance this afternoon? I thought it was quite good. Um, some of his passing was um, as silky smooth as you like. Um, some nice long-range passing as well. Um, minor jot on the copybook for me. Uh, when it was 1-1, it was a bit slow, a bit sluggish, um, which what I would like to have seen a bit more urgency, which we saw when Gale came on. But, um, yeah, I thought it was fine. The midfield did okay in the middle. Uh, yeah. He, he kind of went about his work quite quietly and efficiently in a way. But, uh, yeah, I thought he was fine. Him and Sean worked well. And, yeah, but I just would have liked to have seen a bit more urgency because there was times when he was just walking the ball out because West Brom were just so happy to sit back and let us have the ball in our own half, not hurting them when it was 1-1, that, you know, we should be the ones that were putting our stamp on the game and we weren't for the majority of it in the end but yeah that's that's a, that's a minor moot point but yeah 7 out of 10 for John Joe in my opinion Brandon you could just more or less copy and paste what Sam said for uh, Sean Longstaff this afternoon again very pleasing on the ball um, 
it was I thought it was a good performance considering we haven't trained a lot in the last two weeks. Yeah, I would rate him the same as John Joe. Good combination and yeah. Not much to say about it. He did his job. What do you expect from him, right? Doesn't he? Yeah, I, I yeah, I agree. Um there was he, he put in a uh, a blaster of a shot, didn't he, from about twenty five yards. Yeah. Which um I was praying was going in because when you was doing the um, black and white show on Thursday night, Johnny, I put in the comments in the live chat, um, Sean Longstaff to score a twenty five yard screamer. So I saw him line it up. I was like, "Go on, smash it in, lad!" But, you know, John Joe had one as well, right? Yeah, John Joe had a shot as well, which yeah. got blocked. But you know that just proves, Sam, you were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I know how much Johnny lost to say this. <laughs> you lost out of something. Seriously. You you look like a couple. To be fair, somehow. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. We're just moving on. Moving on. <laughs> moving on. And <laughs> on, on. Um, the goal scorer for Newcastle um, after twenty seconds. Look, when you've got a chance like that in the first minute of the game, in the first chance, you just want to put in the back of the net. And um, you on, are you certain he's going to do that? I would have said 70 30, but a great finish to start things off. I thought he fizzled out in the second half, and I think it was the right substitution to bring on Jacob Murphy to get a bit of fresh legs into the midfield. Um, but I think for his overall contribution, I'm going to give him a seven and a half for his performance this afternoon. Um, if he can get more goals in uh, his game, and I'm, I'm, I'm possibly being a, a, t- a tiny bit harsh, but I think when you look at the fact that we haven't played a lot of football generally in the last two weeks. We've had two full training sessions with the team. Um, I'm really happy with how the majority of the players played today. So, um, Al Niron, I'd like him to start against Leeds, but I still think his best position is as a number 10. I don't think yeah. the, wing, the wing position generally suits him, but you see at times this, after, this afternoon, uh, Sam, he likes to cut in into the middle, and that's where he tries to basically cause defensive problems. Yeah, I don't think you're being harsh with the seven and a half. Um, I, I don't like him on the right. The the goal after 20 seconds was absolutely on a plate with him through good work from, well, a complete balls up from West Brom, but then good work from Wilson and uh, Joe Linton. But, um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Mickey, come on, man. Um, <laughs> but I don't like him on the right-hand side. After that goal, he was cutting a bit of a frustrated figure for me because he wanted he was making these runs and you noticed... Uh, one chance he did have in the first half where he went a bit narrow. He came in, drifted right across onto the left, then just smashed it past the defender and ran after it. His best work comes from the middle and the left, not the right. It, it doesn't really work. I was disappointed that during no point in that game, Richie and Almron didn't switch sides. Yeah. I, I, think, I think it's fair to say uh, Almiron had an outstanding first half and the second half was kind of... Hmm, what we... Seen him Probably, play. Where like, do you think Almiron's best position is? I cannot say ten because, uh, or maybe yes, it is because I like to see Ellison maximum from the left. Yeah, I would say ten. Mm. Yeah, he, I think yeah. He, that's where he's that's where he's creative, isn't he? That's where he's. I think creative. it also depends that's on who you're playing. To be fair, oh, yeah, 100%. I think you have to look at the back line of who you're playing and decide on where you're gonna play, Miggy. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, for sure. Sam, let's continue. But how much? Two... How much did we miss, uh, Alan, since maximum today? I don't think uh, we did. I, don't, I don't think we missed them. I, like, I, I, I was never going. Who, who we got missing? Who could we? Could you imagine ASM on that left hand side today with Lewis? Yeah, it could have been. A, it could have been tough to watch. But, but on his day, on his day, Alan said maximum is the best player. Exactly. So he, he might have found some joy against the. Let's be honest, a championship side in West Brom, they've got one or two players that could possibly do a game in the Premier League, but it's a pretty much a championship side. So the debate will continue. Get your thoughts on um, if we oh, miss yeah, on the right hand side, he would have smashed it, but Bruce probably would have put him on the left and then <laughs> cool play was number ten. Uh, Sam, let's start with Joe Linton. Um, Nick Spag. Yeah, really good first half. Fizzled out, died a bit of a death in the second. Um, Great vision to find Almer on in all that space after 20 seconds. Looked lively, did some good work. Second half, didn't really do anything. Gave, I tell you what, I was ready to hop in the car if West Brom scored in this and come and give Joe a kick up the arse because he lost the ball uh, at the edge of the uh, West Brom box. 
West Brom counter attack went all the way, and Joe Linton was just jogging back casually, casually, yeah. casually, no urgency. West Brom got a shot away from that attack, so mm-hmm. that, that irritated me. It annoys me when that happens. Um, What's the score? <laughs> Did have a chance in the first half, which he should have buried. By the way, yeah, exactly. Yeah. His finishing needs to improve. His positioning needs to improve. But Are you got to assist. He is improving. He is improving. He's doing well. He got another assist today. So there's plenty of positive. What's his score? <laughs> right, I'm going to go six and a half, which is maybe that is a touch harsh, but he did. He was poor. I would say so, half, yes. But um, maybe a seven. But yeah, there's plenty of positives with him and he's going the right way. Having Wilson up front with him. I mean, when you compare it to... Oh, God, I'm going to get crap now because when you compare Brandon's score for Kraft, wrong word, actually. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm scoring the players first. Now we're live. I'm going to give Joe Linton a seven today. He was really good for the half. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Yeah, so he's going the right way and there's plenty of improvement to be had, but the second half, he just needed a bit of a kick up the backside. What's it? Sam, what would you rate uh, Kraft or Emil? Well, I said six, and I think that was being generous, let alone a bloody seven that you give him. Yeah, we won, so and he did what he want, what we, what he had did to do. So well, yeah, but you know, I mean, Adams in the comments earlier saying that uh, Kraft was awful. Three uh, for Adam Kraft. Do- Adam don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I'd probably, I would have, I probably would have gone at most five out of ten. Hey, Brandon, really? yeah. you're right. Yeah. He doesn't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> Brandon. Let's continue uh, with Callum Wilson. Um, didn't yeah. score today, but I think he was busy. He was, yeah, he was a busy bee, wasn't he? Yeah, he did it. Yeah, what you expect from a strike from Newcastle. Very pleased to see him play today. Um, more than happy what he did. Uh, been in some chances. Uh, and I liked him actually more w- uh, with uh, Dwight Gill on top. Somehow, with, instead of Jolin. I don't want to slack off Jolin because he's on a good form somehow. Uh, I'm going to give Callum Wilson... Hmm. Only scored, twice scored. Let's give him an eight. Yeah, I agree, because I think as well with Callum Wilson is that every time he gets the ball, he brings us forward, he, he, he's, he's direct, where a lot of strikers we've had recently will try and hold it up and win a free kick, and we're not really getting anywhere. He, there was times today where he was running towards West Brom's defence, and if there was some if there were other strikers, like if Joe Linton was just a little bit more clever and tried to be in better positions, he could have been on the end of a couple of crosses today, but... Um, I always feel confident when he's playing, and that's. Well, just I think that's what Gill is bringing, though. Where you're talking about, I think Gill is bringing that, though. Like he's he's the more of the striker. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Adam. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, he's, I think he's that, a threat. that is that is what Gill is. Gill is more like a striker than Jolinton is, and he's getting in those positions instead of jo- when Jolinton would never be in that position. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. So I, I, I would like to see. Wilson and Gill on top every yeah. day when it's possible. But I like it better. Jolinton is great. Or no? I don't see that happening against Leeds. I, I, I don't. I just don't. You, I don't think you can start. I Gale think it'd be a good combination for a team like Leeds. Yeah, and Gale likes scoring against Leeds. He scored twice uh, at Ellen Road last time out as well in the Championship. So you never know. Might spring a surprise, Steve Bruce. Uh, substitutions. The first substitution was Jacob Murphy. Was it? Oh, well, it was Dwight Gale. Well, Dwight Gale. Well, so Dwight Gale first. Dwight Gale first getting the goal. Fantastic finish. Now we can all put the comparisons. Would have Joe Linton be in that position? Would he have scored? Yada yada. yada. Dwight Gale scores goals. He does score goals. He just sometimes might need one or two more chances. But today, that was his. And first not only chance. in the championship, what a lot of people would say. Exactly, but. He was in the right position. A great header. Great cross from Murphy. We'll mention that in a second. But he scored the winner. And you're going to have to give him a high score. And I'm probably going to give him an eight. Because one chance, one goal, three points. Newcastle are having a good night tonight. Um, nice. And I like the combination between Gale and Wilson. I really do. Two players that can, I think can feed off each other. And potentially can create the other a lot more chances. 
but you don't want to go up against Gail and Wilson if you're any team in the Premier League, to be honest. I'm not saying like likes of Man United, Man City, you're going to worry about Gail and Wilson, but I think maybe the teams say from 7th and 8th to maybe bottom of the league, they'll look at it and go, Phew, I don't really like the look of that. So maybe it's another uh, string to our bow for Dwight Gale and Callum Wilson starting together. Uh, Sam, Jacob uh, Jacob Murphy was the man that supplied the cross and I think he had a, probably a case to start the game, maybe at right back, because well, Emil Kraft for me is always going to cause the base. We said this after the last game, didn't we? we? It was harsh that Murphy got dropped because he hadn't done anything wrong. Um, him and Dwight Gale changed the game today. Um, Gale, obviously, in particular. Um, two real good attacking substitutions by Bruce, which we'll come on to. Because the game was lulling out into a, a draw, so it's nice to take into a, take a bit of initiative and some positive attacking thinking for a change. But Jacob Murphy, that cross was absolutely out of this world. Um, it was a world class cross and an absolutely kinky finish. Um, so, what to give him? He didn't do anything wrong. I'd probably continue the theme of eights to be honest, and I'd like to see him start on the right hand side if ASM's not available. Uh, midweek because would you start him at right back, Sam? Uh, not no, you can't in a flat back four, can you? Can you? I mean, would you start him, right. Why not? Yeah, you could. Our other right backs are pretty. He's, nap, he's doing they? great, isn't he? Yeah. Like he's never been letting down defensively when we started him playing as a defender, and he's bringing attacking wise. What we cannot really ex- see from other defenders as a right or left back, they're lacking of that, and he's bringing that attacking uh, style. He- he's succeeding attacking wise, yeah, while he's... a lot of defenders are not. Yeah, I think the thing is Leeds are Leeds are going to have a lot of the ball, and he's someone that can create a counter attack from the obviously from the right back position. He's right, and he's pacey as well. Yeah. He has got he has got pace yeah. on the side, so it's something to consider. Um. DeAndre Adam was the last substitution. I don't think it was on long enough, so I'm going to give him a non-applicable. Um, I think I think he was only on for maybe six or seven minutes plus in every time. Yeah, mate, wasn't he? Yeah, so I'm always uncomfortable there. when he comes on, though. Yeah, like, he was actually. Oh, did, again, did okay. again, almost he 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 was sort of almost. Uh, uh, how do you say this in English? Uh, he caused almost an, a penalty, didn't he? Like that flick where he had with who was it again? Oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're what you're referring to. Yeah, yeah. a bit of a coming together, wasn't there? But I don't. You're, you're, you're like really again. Like, come on, I, I'm just always uncomfortable with him. Somehow, yeah. I don't know. I, mean, if, I don't if, want to, but he wouldn't have been anywhere near the squad if we didn't have the COVID outbreak. He'll probably be going in January. He's. I think he's, he wants to go. He was there because we had no one else, and he was there to brawl. He, he'll probably go back to the MLS. I think. Yeah, he was, he was He was. He was brought on to shore the defence up because he'd made Bruce had made two attacking changes, got the goal, and he'd shore things up, see the last ten, five, ten minutes out. So he did what he had to do, and it, it all worked out. It was, it was fine. Yeah, it did the job. Brandon, I'm going to let you start with Steve Bruce. His two substitutions paid off wonders Massively. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... What do you think he should get? So obviously, we're all trying to agree on this score, but um, with everything that's been going on, does Steve Bruce deserve credit today with the three points? Yes, today, yes, for sure. You know, I'm always a big... I wouldn't say big Bruce fan, but I always try to support him. Uh, but today's changes really show that he was thinking attacking-wise, although it was against a weaker squad and on paper as well. So he kind of... that He probably showed his balls more because he knew he was the better team. Uh, but that's what we want in every game, right? Even if you play a stronger opponent, show uh, show these sub- attacking substitutes, take Lewis out and bring an attacking player. So, yeah, uh, we have to credit him from that. So, I would say, for me, today, Steve Bruce is the man of the match, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Sam, where do you st- uh, come on this? Because the two substitutions, like my Brandon mentions, made the difference, got the assist, got the goal. And yes, with everything, I think I think we've got to remember with everything that's going on. I think he's only had two proper training sessions with the players, and I know he's had loads of training sessions beforehand. He's barely Plus had a, a, a team to pick, but it, it's worked. Yeah, um, them two changes changed the game. It wasn't defence aside; it wasn't the disaster lineup and bench we were all expecting, was it? Um, he did have some options off the bench, which obviously he utilised superbly. Because bringing Gale on changed the game, bringing Murphy on real attacking change. Uh, the game was 
fizzling out into nothing. We were very, very stagnant uh, at the start of that second half. And something needed to be done. He still leaves subs a little bit too late for my liking. I agree. But he made the right calls. So he deserves the praise. I was probably going to go eight out of ten. I think eight and a half is probably a bit too There has good. to be a man of the mess song. <laughs> I mean, if it was many more injuries, he probably would have slotted in at centre back himself. But to be yeah. fair, let's line it, let's line it up. Yeah, uh, he brings two good substitutions in, and we always uh, criticise Bruce for bringing the wrong uh, substitutions in uh, or too late. Plus, he had this whole COVID thing going on. Uh, yeah, why, I, why shouldn't he be man of the match today? Be- just only because of this. I agree, he, and. I- uh, after 70 minutes and the game was going how it was because mm-hmm. West Brom were looking the more likely, weren't they? We weren't at that time, if you remember. Conor Gallagher was in the middle pulling all the strings and I was thinking, I swear to God, if he uses this COVID thing as an excuse straight after the game, I'm going to go mental because it's just like he's already lined up his excuses before they started, but real positive changes real attacking threat on the pitch. It was great to see uh, Joe Linton, Gale, Wilson, Almron briefly all on the pitch at the same time. And, and Jacob Murphy's been a revelation this season. Who would have thought he'd be coming back? Murphy to uh, Gale, former West Brom loanees. But uh, yeah, unlucky. So yeah, I'll, I'll go for an eight. What do you think, Johnny? Well, I was, I was just, it was almost like you were in court because Brandon was basically having his um, say to your say on it. I'm going to go eight out of 10. Um, I agree with what Brandon's saying. There should be some sort of man of the match, but I don't think it was Steve Bruce. I think you could possibly, possibly argue it was Kieran Clark, it was Isaac Hayden. I think they were probably more merited a bit more than an eight if we had to push it. But I do agree with what Brandon was saying. I think the substitutions that he made were basically the reason why we won the game today because West Brom were, I think, more likely to score than us at some point in that second half, particularly in the first 20 minutes when it was 1-1. They, they really looked like they were going to probably score the next goal but the changes were made and Jacob Murphy and Dwight Gale fresh legs both quite quick and it's paid off a fantastic cross a fantastic header Newcastle are getting all three points now Steve Bruce has had very little time to really um, have, a, have a team ready for this game I think there was a lot of rumours potentially that under 23s might have had to be involved for today's game and it, it, it hasn't worked out like that but Newcastle have done enough have done enough and that was all that we kind of ask for today is give us your all and if you win then that's what we kind of expect today because it is West Brom at home no disrespect so I know how to put it better though let me let me reframe it yeah (laughs) okay so overall we got like we got like four or five players giving an eight and Bruce including that is probably five or six I don't know let's just say today's match is the whole team Uh, it was a good team effort let's call it that way yes definitely except of Lewis um, yeah, yeah, quite right. Um, and the thing is, as well, we weren't putting away these teams last season. Hundred percent agree as well. Yeah. So that's that's a massive plus because we can't. Obviously, last season we got the win at Spurs. We beat United and uh, Chelsea at home. You can't rely on them results as we've seen already this season. So we need to be putting these teams away. Same next Saturday at home to Fulham. So uh, yeah, it's um, there are some positives for sure. It's good. It's a uh, it's a it's a good night. 100%. Good teamwork always with me, Sam and Brandon. Like this video and if you can subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV and Newcastle Fans TV actually that would be fantastic on a day that Newcastle win by two goals to one. My thanks to Sam and to Brandon. We still have the last word with Lee later on this evening. He will give you a more in-depth discussion about Newcastle's win with some thoughts of Steve Bruce. <laughs> it looks like Brandon has nobody in just ahead. Thanks very much, Mickey Townsend. I think you're going to steal the show with that one. <laughs> As Brandon's very, very happy with what I you're saying. I got this for you. <laughs> <laughs> We're back again on Wednesday for the game against Leeds. We'll have the fan reaction show. Scoring the players and the last word as well. So until Wednesday, we'll see you all very, very soon.